President Muhammadu Buhari flags off National Young Farmers Scheme to encourage agribusiness. Disbursement of survival fund for artisans begins in Abuja. 2.9 billion liters of petrol in stock, says NNPC. And Business Express will be joining the conversation on the viable destination in the journey to an effective COVID-19 vaccine and how it will affect global economy. This is Business Express and it's reaching you from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. I am Muplang Dakok. It's a pleasure having you tuned to Business Express. We begin with news that the Federal Executive Council has formally approved the ratification of the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, AFCFTA, signed by Nigeria in July last year. The Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, announced this while briefing journalists after the virtual meeting of the Council presided over by President Mohamed Buhari. State House correspondent Adamu Sambo reports that these and other resolutions were adopted towards enhancing safety and security, digital economy, healthcare delivery, and roads infrastructure. Now, after nearly 20 years in limbo, the National Agricultural Land Development Authority, established in 1992 to bring development to the rural communities through agriculture, has been resuscitated. At the former relaunch of the program, President Muhammad Buhari also flagged off the National Young Farmers Scheme designed to engage, encourage, and attract Nigerians into the full value chain of agribusiness. In young Nigerian graduates and non-graduates alike and be part of this government's effort to reduce unemployment and contribute to the regeneration of agriculture and our economy. I charge the Executive Secretary, CEO of NELDA, and his team to continue to live up to expectations and know that communities around the country are looking forward to their positive presence in all localities. I sincerely assure you, Mr. President, that NADA under your watch will achieve food security, job and wealth creation in our country. Artisans in Wusi Market and Apple Mechanic Village have begun receiving the one-time 30,000 Naira grant from the federal government under the Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises Survival Fund. The monies are being disbursed by the Bank of Industry. Yes, I don't get a lot. The entire FCT, for the artisan alone is about 4,005. By the time you add the transport, it is 9,000. So you, you do not expect to see 1,000 people that have collected in Nakuo alone. You do not expect to see 1,000 people that have collected in Wuse alone. So it's just for everybody to understand that for those of them that have registered and have been verified, we can tell you that they will collect their money. After we make sure that the people that are being paid in the under artisans and transport workers scheme will now kick up on the guarantee take-up scheme. We we'll also try to also do exactly what we did here to ensure that the payroll support has gotten to the people and other and other segment of the MSME survival fund. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has disclosed that companies, individuals, and agro-processors of agricultural commodities would be able to access up to a maximum of 2 billion naira per obligo under the private sector-led Accelerated Agriculture Development Scheme. In the guidelines for the PAADs released in Abuja, Director of Development Finance Department of the CBN, Yusuf Philip, stated that the interest rates under the intervention shall be 5.0% per annum up to February 28, 2021, while from March 1, 2021, interest on the facility would be 9% per annum. 
all inclusive. The statement disclosed that the maximum tenure shall be six years with six months moratorium for annual crops while perennial crops maximum tenure shall be 10 years with one year moratorium. Philip added that the scheme was aimed at exploring private sector partnership to facilitate more rapid land clearing for production of key agricultural commodities targeted at addressing the food security and youth unemployment challenges across the country. And still from the Apex Bank, the CBN this Wednesday is rolling over Treasury bills worth 167.8 billion naira across the 91, 182, and 364 day tenors at the primary market auction. Analysts say yields in the secondary markets are expected to remain pressured due to high liquidity levels. Nevertheless, calm trading sessions are anticipated this week as investors interest filters to alternative investments with high expected returns. There was a slightly bullish outing in the Nigerian Treasury bill's secondary market last week, despite quiet trading sessions as financial system liquidity levels remained high at 920 billion naira on Friday. However, average yield across all tenors marginally declined by four basis points week on week to close at 0.5%. As the nation grapples with consequences of the NSAS protests, Nigeria Employers Consultative Association, NECA, says members of the organized private sector lost over 5 trillion naira to the looting and carnage after hoodlums hijacked the protest across the country. NECA in Lagos lamented that the arson, looting and massive destruction of businesses across the country had worsened the nation's economic crisis, urging both the federal and state governments to immediately come up with serious measures to help businesses that were affected to save them from imminent collapse. NECA President Taiwo Adeni said this act not only compromises the ability of these businesses to meet obligations to their creditors, vendors, employees, and regulators, amongst many others. It also has the capacity to cripple efforts at reducing unemployment and attracting foreign direct investment into the nation. While the Lagos state government estimated a loss of about 1 trillion naira and Plateau state government estimated over 700 billion naira, the total value of the economic loss to organized businesses nationwide could be in the region of over 5 trillion naira. Absence of vaccine has been a major challenge confronting the world in the effort to contain the spread of coronavirus disease that has claimed over 1.2 million lives since December 2019. The good news now is that a major pharmaceutical company has recorded a major success in the third phase of its vaccine trial. Uche Ugochuku now takes a look at efforts by health bodies around the world aimed at developing a vaccine. Quest for vaccine has been prioritized since the outbreak of COVID-19 in Wuhan, China in December 2019 before it spread to other parts of the world. Although developing vaccines normally requires years of testing and additional time to produce in large scale, scientists have been intensifying efforts towards developing COVID-19 vaccine within 12 to 18 months due to the devastating effects of the pandemic. Currently, more than 170 teams of researchers have been on the project of developing a safe and effective vaccine with more than 170 candidate vaccines now tracked by the World Health Organization. For a fair distribution and especially access to the poor and those who cannot afford, the most important element will be political commitment. More than 170 economies are now engaged in discussions to potentially participate in COVAX. And Nigerian government also joined the world in looking for solutions to the COVID-19 problem by constituting a committee made up of scientists to scrutinize claims by different indigenous scientists for cure for the disease. This quest for an effective vaccine against COVID-19 seems to have attained a milestone as drug makers Pfizer and BioNTech announced its vaccine administered on about 43,000 people. Uh, we are uh, expecting that we will launch a uh, phase three study uh, pretty soon in July that will involve 30,000 people. 
Pfizer says it will be able to supply 50 million doses by the end of 2020 and around 1.3 billion by the end of 2021. The only pitfall here for us here in Africa and developing countries is that storage for this vaccine, as reported, must be at minus 70 degrees centigrade, which you know is not an easy feat to maintain this cold chain from the point of production to the point of delivery. So there are 10 more vaccines in the final stage of testing, so more results are expected in the coming weeks and months. Investors around the world are clinging to COVID-19 vaccine hopes as pharmaceutical giant Pfizer announces 90% success rate. This news has since enhanced optimism among policymakers, giving hopes that the new normal might be easing in the wake of a second lockdown. What are the implications for the global economy that is in the negative growth trajectory? And how is the news changing the face of businesses? Dr. Chidoke Ekechuku is an economist and he is the former uh, Director General of the Abuja Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Thank you for coming on Business Express today. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Okay, let's start by you telling us um, the relationship between the expected COVID-19 vaccine and the economy. You know, um, since the advent of uh, COVID-19, um, economies shut down and um, some countries that even opened their, their, their lockdown and opened their economies um, had to go back shutting down. Of course, we have had such situation happening in Europe when they went back shutting down again. Um, the implication is that even with the announcement, people are beginning to have hope, business hope, health hope. And the fact that they know they can even get into long-term business plan and long-term business um, agreements. Um, they hope the, the, the vaccine, because it's even coming from a reputable pharmaceutical company, Pfizer, mm -hmm. um, gives everybody hope. Okay. And um, we are so hopeful that it's going to open up the entire global economy because people can now get into certain agreements. Many people, even in this country, Nigeria, have not come out since the lockdown. They are still afraid. Of course, you know, when it was said people with uh, underlying sicknesses should stay out and people over a certain age should stay back, many people have still not come out since then and they are still doing some skeletal business uh, um, outings. So this actually is going to open the economy as we move forward. Okay, so you have said that uh, the vaccine is going to affect economics but how is it going to affect uh, economies like uh, nigeria because we know that the impact has been enormous do you think that the vaccine is going to be able to reclaim the financial footing of economies like nigeria yes uh, first of all what we need to do is to even start right now to get into advocacy okay recall that before now there were a lot of negative uh, things we we are read at, in the public uh, domain and uh, those things were such that people should not uh, take any vaccine from anywhere and uh, so there are so many people who are still holding on to that okay. uh, there are many people who don't even believe that anything like coronavirus happened some people say it's gone so first of all there has to be advocacy by all necessary government agencies to tell Nigerians about the importance of having this vaccine um, and that important when, when that advocacy starts and continues before we even start having this vaccine because don't forget that it's going to take a while before the vaccine even comes to us uh, considering the quantity that has to be produced to go around the whole entire world so advocacy has to start now so that when it comes the acceptability will be high so that we won't have vaccine that will come and Nigerians will not accept to take it okay we noticed that um commodities and st stocks around the globe uh, appreciated in the last few days uh, on the news of that's after the news of uh, the vaccine Vassin. yes and then this is also a few days after uh, joe biden was announced as winner of uh, mm -hmm. the u.s elections yes is this a reaction to the announcement or to the election or both 
I can tell you it's both because each of them, each of the two announcements, um, had capacity to turn around the, the global market situation. Mm -hmm. We're talking about an election of uh, sec the, the, the largest economy in the world, and people have been watching with so much interest. In fact, in Nigeria, Nigerians have shown so much interest in the election of um, America as if it's an election that's taking place here. The reason for that is because um, anything that affects America affects the whole world. And anything that affects America affects Nigeria. Especially in some of the policies of that country, they also affect us. For people who want to do business in that country, and you have um, all the immigrations, immigration laws and policies affecting us negatively, they have been showing interest. And the second thing is the announcement of uh, the COVID um, vaccine. Mm -hmm. You see, these announcements have given people hope both in Nigeria and all over the world. If you have hope, then you can get into any business agreement. If you have hope, you can even get into some investments. So the two of them had, capaci had cap capability of turning around the stock market and commodities market. And I can tell you, each of them on their own could just turn around that market. So that's why the market has really turned out positively and in reaction to the two announcements that have happened. Okay. Um, do you think that the world should wait for big companies like Pfizer, just like you said, to come up with vaccines, or uh, Nigeria and Africa should be doing something uh, in that regard. So to be able to achieve that, let's talk about um, health financing. What do you think can be done to improve health financing so that we can get to the point where we don't have to wait for global giants yeah. to do that? Um, you know, what has happened recently has opened the floors of countries of the world. It's not, it didn't only affect Nigeria negatively. We saw what, how it affected even heavy countries and big giants all over the world. The number of deaths recorded all over the world um, in even some de many developed countries um, was just more than what happened in Nigeria and in Africa. W exposing what has happened is the fact that um, nobody was ready for what happened. And so the level of readiness and preparedness should actually be turned around going forward. And uh, African countries obviously know they have not been budgeting enough for health. And so we need to do far more. It may be difficult to just budget from the regular budget, annual budget we do. If it is uh, possible to have uh, a, a, a fund where monies will be going into because health is wealth, health is life. If for people who have not experienced uh, e-health, <laughs> you know that for you to do anything, you must have good health. So we need to take health so seriously and uh, so that we can even save a little more, more in the kind of um, um, tourism, health tourism we, we have in this country. So it, it was an eye opener for all of us and for the whole world that we need to take health so seriously in order for us not to wait until such giant, like you mentioned, will come up with the vaccine before we have solutions. All right, let me take you a bit away from what we are discussing. Let's talk about the AFCFTA. The FEC has just uh, ratified the AFCFTA for Nigeria. Uh, what do you see happening when it takes off next year? Um, it, it, it was very necessary for the president to have formed a committee to look into the benefits of our membership in, in that. And that committee worked, and they worked for a reasonable time before they uh, recommended to the president that this was a necessary group to belong. And of course, it was accepted by him and uh, now ratified by National Assembly. Um, for us to benefit from AFTA, we need to be a net exporter of goods and services for us to benefit. Okay. Otherwise, we are going to remain and uh, uh, Western countries are going to be having their manufacturing outlets within our, neighbor, our neighboring states, uh, within um, AFTA. And when they come in there, they are going to be moving their goods into Nigeria um, seamlessly. But for us to really benefit from this, we, we have to increase our production capacity in agriculture, in manufacturing, and other sectors so that we can easily reach out because what it means is that we now do not have a we have a borderless uh, market. We can easily move from one con from a country to other countries to supply our goods. So, even any foreign currency will be easy for Nigerian manufacturers and Nigerian um, uh, dealers. So, 
being a member of that will actually expand our frontiers of markets in other in other African countries. But if we remain at the level of capacity production capacity we have, we are going to be receiving, and uh, the balance of payments we are going to be having in Nigeria is going to be negative, and that is just why we need to work hard before next year. Okay. Let's hope that we're able to work hard, just like you said, to meet up with what is demanded for yes. the AFCFTA. We've been speaking to Dr. Chijoke Ekechuku, an economist. Thank you for your time on Business Express today. It's my today. pleasure. Thank you very much. The managing director of NNPC, Mele Kari, is assuring the public that the corporation has in place a stock of over 2.9 billion liters of petrol to guarantee seamless movement of people, goods and services across the country in the forthcoming Christmas season and beyond. In a statement by Dr. Kene Obateru, Group General Manager, Group Public Affairs Division of the NNPC, the GMD dismissed rising insinuation of possible scarcity of petroleum products following ongoing disagreement between the federal government and members of the Petroleum and Natural Gas Senior Staff Association, Pengerson, over the implementation of the Integrated Payroll and Personnel Information System, IPPIS. The NNPC GMD reiterated that the corporation is determined to make the 2020 end-of-year festivities a zero fuel queue period, just like the preceding year noting that the critical stockholders in the petroleum product supply and distribution chain such as tanker drivers, depot owners and road transport owners have been mobilized to ensure hitch-free season. Oil prices climbed over 1% on Wednesday after an industry report showed U.S. crude inventories have fallen more than expected, while hopes of an effective COVID-19 vaccine continued to encourage sentiment. Brent crude features were up 48 cents to $44.09 a barrel, while U.S. West Texas Intermediate WTI crude futures were also up 48 cents to $41.84 a barrel. Both benchmarks gained nearly 3% on Tuesday. Crude stockpiles fell by 5.1 million barrels last week to about 482 million barrels. Similarly, gold prices edged higher this Wednesday, supported by a softer dollar, while concerns about surging COVID-19 cases in the United States and logistical challenges over the rollout of a potential vaccine further sustained the metals appeal. Let's see commodity prices. And on the stock market, stocks sustained gains Wednesday as investor confidence sustains price appreciation. At the close of the day's session, the NSE All Share Index rose by 1.9% to 33.268.3 points. Market capitalization also rose to 17.383 trillion naira. Volume rose to 858 million, valued at 9.062 billion naira in 8,152 deals. FBN Holdings, Transcorp, and Zenith Bank were the most sought after stocks. And outside uh, the country, European stocks were modestly higher Wednesday, continuing to climb as hopes rise over forthcoming coronavirus vaccine, while other markets around the globe traded mixed. Over to Bosse de Ebel for details. U.S. equity futures were mixed on Wednesday amid this week's rotation out of technology stocks in cyclical names. Dow futures added 208 points, while S&P 500 futures and Nasdaq 100 futures were in mildly positive territory. Stocks in Asia-Pacific were mixed, with tech shares in the region monitored, following overnight declines for the sector on Wall Street. The Nikkei rose 1.78% to close at 
25,349.6, while Shanghai Composite shared 0.53% to 3,342.2, and the Hang Seng Index also dipped 0.28% to finish its trading day at 26,226.98. European stocks were modestly higher Wednesday, continuing to climb as hopes rise over a forthcoming coronavirus vaccine. For stocks in Africa, the beers dominated early trading with South Africa's JSE Africa Top 40, Tunisia's Tunidex and Namibia's overall index started trade negative. Ghana's GSE Composite marginal, while Nairobi's all share rose by 0.83%. Boss De Ebo, Business Express. And talking currency, the dollar fell on Wednesday as the world awaits outcome of potential coronavirus vaccine. And that brings us to the end of this edition of Business Express. Uh, remember that this episode and all previous episodes are available on YouTube. And you can join us again on Thursday at 9.30 a.m. for another episode of the program. Until then, I am Muplang Dakok. <laughs>